friends over at Cell Hound have outdone themselves. They're giving the Death Piles and Taxes listeners an opportunity of a life. They're, they're going to help us make some money, get rid of that Death Pile, get your items listed because you can't sell out an empty wagon. Man, so all that you got, kill that Death Pile. When you go over to Cell Hound, use promo code, capital letters, Death Piles 25 to save 25% off of their service. And, and get out there and start making some money. Here comes the money. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Death piles and taxes right here in the Pace in Utah. How you doing, Adam Beasley? This is D-Roy Everett, and it's Rodeo Season Out West. It sounds like you were at the Ute Stampede last weekend. I boycotted it, but I went down to see the Stars and Stripes flying to the arena. And brothers and sisters, look next to you, and if you don't enjoy this country and freedom, then you got another thing coming. But right now, we're going to talk about all your death piles and taxes related eBay selling merchandise, and I might do this all night. eBay pirates, if you're out there, you turn up this podcast, you kick back, you keep listening, you do whatever you got to do, but we're going to have a we're going to have a good time. Woo! Wow. Are you proud to be a Death Piles and Taxes member, Adam Beasley? Yes, sir. And this is a podcast about that. There you go. We're here. We're going to get you a way to make some more money. If you have an eBay store, we're going to help you improve it. If you like to buy and sell online, this is your place to learn how to do it because Derek is crushing it. He is, like, he's double-fisted it over there. He's got this large... Body armor drink. We just got him a cold diet Dr. Pepper cherry flavored. He is in a good mood despite me being late by eight minutes. I enjoy a spicy cherry soda. And let me tell you what I do. When, I, when Adam's running late, I try to make me some money. But today, I thought, well, I'm running home from work because usually I just stop by on my way home from work. It makes sense if you know the geol- geological layout. The geology. If you know the geology, I go south on the I 15. And, uh, so I went home to get me some shorts and some uh, some sandals, kind of dressed down a little bit. I didn't want to impress you too much with my work clothes. I got me this new hat that uh, Pelican provided us, Death Piles and Taxes hat. So what happens But I'm getting out of my car, and up rolls a man on a Segway scooter. I kid you not, pictures to prove it. Okay. And he wants to know if I want to know about pest control. Lovely. Now, we're in a pandemic. Now, if you know anything about pests and pandemic, you shouldn't be rolling up on me. I will have to say, I got two late filers uh, this past week, and both of them had an expense on their business for a Segway. It, that, exactly. Same deal. Segway. Guys can't even walk door to door no more. No, they can't. I don't blame them. I, I'd roll around if I could, too. They're, they're just, they're, they're making the best of their time. They're improving. It's kind of like that movie, The uh, the Pursuit of Happiness. It's one of my favorites. Uh Anyways, he figured out a way, if he hung up the phone, it cost him time. So he literally would take his phone and then hang up and then dial with an eraser, and he improved his probability because you get no so many times. Same thing like these guys. They figure they go around their little scoop machine, they're able to go from house to house much faster. That way they get more no's, which eventually leads to more yeses. Well, since you weren't home and he was offering me quite a deal... And you were running late was the reason I got stuck. Did you take it? I went ahead and told him my friend Adam Beasley up on the hill over here was talking about how he had all these pests. We already got it. We've already got it, pest control. Well, you're going to have my boy come up to you. and uh, I appreciate it. Segue on up that hill. I thought if he could go up there, he deserves it. I hope you told him we're at 7,000 East, 400 West. Um, Main Street. Oh, I thought you just gave out your personal address on the air. I, I thought, did. oh, I'll roll with it. I did. That's what it is. Main Street, huh? 7,000 West, 400 East, Main Street, uh, Tooele, Utah. All right, then. Well, with that being said, that's where you send all your hate mail, and uh, that's right. <laughs> they'll all get there. Adam, how's the week been? Uh, I'm going to let people in on a little secret. I believe I found something extremely fun, and I bought a lot of things last night. You found something funny and you spent some money. A lot of money. 
Well, I'm I'm captive. I told you I'm I'm planning for this Christmas. That's always the thing. It used to be your Hatchimals, your uh, pound puppies, your whatever odd things that you. Don't have. forget your fingerlings. Your fingerlings. That's right. Um, I'm crack this hole. Over at it. Sounds good. Um, you you always are trying to find that it toy. You know that thing. And I'm telling you, the card market, I know we talk about it, and I don't want to get heavy, but I'm telling you, if you are any kind of sports connoisseur, you can find cards at a very, very low price, buy them, get them graded, and, and sell them for, I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to sell a graded card less than $30. Well, and let's, uh, we'll get into your story a little bit, but what's, what's hitting this off, I'm sure, I'm sure we have to cover it. There was a LeBron James rookie card. And, oh, my God. I mean, we're going to talk not just all. I know we go derailed. We get on sports cards. I know everyone listening. We got our, our you know, our stay-at-home mom type. We got people who do not care about sports. I understand it. But just for the uh, value of this show. eBay purposes. eBay purposes. Online reselling resources. If you're a reseller, you need to know about this. And it doesn't always get brought up in the resell type news because it is more sports-related. A LeBron James graded card, which was a Beckett 9.5. Yeah, not even a perfect 10. Which is hard to get with Beckett. That's usually, that's one of my other reasons I go PSA. A lot more 10s. It went for, Adam, how much did that go for? $1.8 million. That's insane. That's like, that's like more than what Derek makes in a year. Barely, though. That's more than I'd make in a year if I lived to be 2,000 years old. <laughs> And kept every dollar that I make. Yeah. I don't know. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for a singular graded card. And that is what we are talking about. The 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 craziness of Corona, it changed the way I had to do things. I had to adapt because all of her resources, like all her places to source were closed. There was no way getting in. And that's really where I'm like, I got to find some way because this is my... My habit, this is what I like doing. I gotta figure out a way to do it. It's your niche that you're getting into. Yeah, and I got into it. So what I did is you know what, that's a huge thing, but where we are located, um, sports is a big thing. It's a Donovan Mitchell stuff is it going crazy. I figured, you know what I'm gonna do? I am going to go hardcore on local stuff. I know you've been doing some, like I said, you've got some different things that you've been selling, but I am going Heavy, heavy. You just leave the Orem Thunder in Arena League alone. That's my turf. I'm going heavy, heavy on these uh, locally, recently um, drafted players, and also on the, um, you know, the best of the best in the past. So he's going with people that played their college around here or are from around here, and then he's also going with uh, your legends. When you think Utah, if you know anything about Utah sports, I'm sure he's thinking John Stockton, Carl Malone, and. Uh, but of course, Mark Eaton. But uh, he's pulling out some cards here. Not true. And that's where I like that you went. I'm going off the beaten path. Okay. I'm doing something that I don't think anybody else is doing because I believe it's that we're going to hit that market because people want sports really bad. So you got you got here a, a Steve Young, who's an NFL Hall of Famer. Yes. Played at BYU. Uh, best, best known for backing up Joe Montana. Yeah, hey. Hey. You got you got Eric Weddle, who I uh, if you were gonna ask my painter, just sent off an Eric Weddle card my own self. Oh man! So, but not the rookie. Okay. Best known for uh, having the beard. I, yeah, I don't know. I was gonna say something. Not my parents. So I had an Eric Weddle book, and I had both my parents, and I think my grandparents read it. And then you have Alex Smith. And and notice the Alex Smith card. Which one it is? It's it's an autographed, and it's also a three of twenty. I, but what team does he play for? He plays for the Washington sports team. Oh, you got the, to the Washington me. football club. Oh, you have got to be kidding me! The Washington football team. Wow, Derek is so woke he can't even say Redskins. Well, they're not that anymore. Wow, I knew you were gonna. I knew you. Were, I should have bet you the twenty. You should have. You knew I'd do the right thing. Yeah, you given an opportunity. You're so PC. Who knows what's going on? The Washington Redskins, because in my uh, estimation, here in the near future, you will not be able to buy that piece of memorabilia. And I think it's going to be hard for them to pull all the Redskins merchandise off of eBay. Well, Nike pulled it off. Well, they can control it, but so I mean, did Amazon. 
Okay. Well, well, I mean, they, they ripped off masks. Like, they can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. Uh, I'm just saying if you find stuff, it's going to be a few years before it's worth anything as far as, I, I don't, I think there's so much of a supply of, of uh, shirts and, and uh, sweaters and yeah. jerseys and stuff. It's, it's going to take a while before it becomes limited or old. So here's my suggestion. Wherever you are, I would, if you are enjoy any kind of sports, I would go after that little bit of market because I do a lot of research on the Facebook marketplace. I try to find different things. Oh, it's the one over there you have thrown my way. Oh, that's Johnny Mons. Johnny Mons. Johnny Mons. Okay. Like, that was just one that came in the uh, the. That just came. That just came in the case. Came. came, came, came it was just the freebie they threw it in. It was the freebie. But what I'm saying is, I I really really believe that. Yeah, we talk a lot of eBay. We we source them the car. There's other things. But this is all about making money podcast and something that you enjoy. And I know that there is a market for selling graded cards on the Facebook marketplace of basically locally players. Because in our area, there are none. And I just know it because there's so many people that go to those games. I mean, if I had my stuff, you know what I would be doing? If I was game day, I would be there with my, my cards selling them. Because yeah. I know people would be buying them. Well, another thing, I, I visit our buddy Phil a lot who owns the card shop. Um, and he has, there's a lot of people that's interested right now. There's a lot of people in our area, I'm sure, if there's a lot of people interested in central Utah in sports cards nationally. I couldn't imagine what it's like in Texas. In Texas or, let's say, a place that has a professional, multi-professional sports teams, you know. So that's a great idea. So that's my, that's my tip. That's my bolo. That's my thing. I was up uh, late last night. I found this um, sports card place. Um, online, they have an eBay store, and I was buying multiples of the same card. And I'm talking about, uh, for instance, we had a, a local quarterback, his name was Jordan Love. He was drafted in the first round by the Green Bay Packers, very unexpected. I was buying. He's going to be the Steve Young of Green Bay. Or, or he could be the next uh, Brad Favre. See, I mean, here's the thing I was buying his cards for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars a piece. And here's the good deal. Uh, Adam could probably track this guy down and get him autographed here soon because the, the local uh, connections, use those connections if you're in these areas. Uh, you, you probably know somebody that knows somebody. So on these different eBay places, you can look and there's several multiple quantities of a card, and that's what you want. Again, it makes it easier to list. It does everything. Now you're selling six of the same thing, plus you can get these at a lower price if you're buying more than one. So maybe your kid buys things at the Walmart, and then he has some cards, and you have a bunch of Jordan Love cards that you didn't know what to do with. Yeah. Well, put them on the eBay, and a guy like Adam Absolutely. will buy several of them I'll from you. I'll buy lots of them. It's, uh, it's just another way to make some money. I knew we weren't going to deep dive the card talk, but that's a great idea. Uh, why Adam's saying this is because the holidays are, believe it or not, they're coming, they're up, coming up. And this year is going to be unlike any other year because it already has been. And like I said, I've got my, my things. I'm, I'm doing my preparation. I'm getting my work because my goal is I got I got to I got to make some money at this to really um, you know prove my point. Like anybody can make money selling things online if you apply yourself and and do something you're gonna enjoy. Yeah, do something you like. And uh, here's here's the thing with with the holiday season. Uh, we're still under um, somewhat of a, a quarantine. Uh, I just saw that that uh, Black Friday Walmart's gonna be shut this year. Um, I'm thinking a lot of the Black Fridays aren't going to be as they have been in the past. People are having to wear masks. They're having to be quarantined. We're going to have to be social distance. People are going to buy online. I, I guarantee this year record sales, I mean, on, on that weekend of people not only buying new merchandise but buying things off uh, places like eBay, Macari, Amazon, all your online retailers because there, it's going to be like a couple of months ago when no one could go out and get anything, people aren't going to want to sit in cold weather. They're not going to want to, you know, take a chance of getting a virus. They're not going to want to have to wear masks with all their kids and family waiting in line. Go and fight people in the big crowds in the stores. That's just not going to happen this year. Let's let's be honest. Think about it. Think about your situation. If you do get together with friends and family for Thanksgiving, which a lot of people still aren't going to be doing, you're not going to want to leave that to go around random people and have to uh, shop. You know what? Walmart is finally doing the right thing. They just announced today that they will be closed on all of Thanksgiving Day 
to get away from the crowds, and you know what? Spend a little time with their family. Now go back and rewind about 30 seconds, and you can hear me say that exact same thing. Oh, I wasn't listening to you. Ab doesn't listen. I don't know why you're listening to this show. I was just reiterating the point. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm, I, I was taking care of a text message for a client. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to, uh, you know... I shouldn't have said anything inside if you caught it yourself when you listened. I, I usually don't, but I will say one thing. You know what you're doing? Not only are you inspiring people to... I'm uh, boring Adam to death. No, no, you're not. Inspiring people... I'm going to have to come back in the second half of the show. Inspiring people to make money online, to learn to flip... You're also inspiring budding future podcasters. And if you want to have your own podcast, you can be there to co-host. All you got to do is hey, listen hey, to no, what I say. No, no. When we talk about the Walmart, the Super Walmart doing the right thing on Thanksgiving. Wow. You ever shop on Thanksgiving? Yes, I have. Okay. Don't derail me yet. I, I, I went with you. I bought a ladder from like Lowe's <laughs> years ago, and I bought you one, too. Well, then was I with you, or did I owe you one? No, you, you just said, hey, you're going to be there. Will you buy me a ladder? And I That's because I spent I spent the right thing to spend time with my family. I don't, no, that wasn't, it wasn't Thanksgiving. <laughs> that was the day after. That yeah. was Black Friday. Um, you're, budding podcast. Apparently, uh, the Husky section's getting big. Yeah, pun intended. I was going to say, when, when, when weren't we big? Um, Clint Painter. You've inspired him. He wants to do a podcast he because should. you are doing one. Well, uh, I so Clint Painter sent out a text message to me and Michael the other day, and it, it was a, it was somewhat of a riddle, and I got it right. That's all. I mean, I, it's, I'm not going to go down the long path, but yep. shout, shout out to Clint Painter. We can't air that. Apparently, they might be here next week in studio. Well, there you go. To uh, kind of see the banter, see what we do. I told them, I'm like, listen, I'm that little little less talk, a lot more action kind of guy. I'm like, let's just let's just record it the first time. No, 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 we can't. Do what that. uh, what? What's he want to do a podcast about? He and a friend from college apparently want to get down the uh, political scale game. That's a, that's a brave man. That's what I told him. And he said, listen, it's going to get a little wild. I mean, there's things that we've said that I'm like, oh, man, when this comes back to get me, like, I'm going to be in trouble. Which, by the way, thank you, whomever, um, you know, like, monitors this podcast. Last time I heard it was China. They can't get my TI-83. But we still have a podcast this week because we didn't get banned because of Derek's um, oh, explicit information on, on Macari comparing women to... Oh, so women. so I made a mistake last week. and it, I met Poshmark, not Etsy. Surprise, surprise. You I met mistake. Poshmark. Now, I'll, I'll, do, I'll redo my whole analogy after the break. It's a little much to get in here. I, I went straight home and told my wife what I had done, too, so I got, kept myself out of trouble that way. Yeah. I haven't gotten to that part of life. I stick by it, but I'll come back and explain exactly what I meant, because I was saying Etsy, but I meant Poshmark. I got worked up, and I was saying the wrong thing, which explains why I get in trouble sometimes. That's, that's why Derek had to come out and say the Washington Football Club. He got real... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the Washington Redskins. He got real woke over the weekend. Apparently, I, R got to him about his things that he had to say. I just tried to do the right thing, unlike Walmart on the previous Thanksgivings in Adam's world. But... If you, are, if you are trying to sell your uh, Washington sports merchandise, maybe I should just sell Hound and use the promo code DEATH, the promo code. Promo code. I was going real smooth there. Death Piles 25. Which I like that we can't, you know, what music it was, but oh, Snoop Dogg, you know, little dog. I mean, you're always just We're doing it. good. Listen, if nothing else, we're having fun. Uh, our podcast is going great. So great. if I inspire others, I want them to, uh, we'll be like a spinoff show. Yeah. We Except for they'll probably do a better job. So they'll just have to, like, say that we uh, I, we did it so they can do it. Somehow we can get the listeners they will have. Yeah. I know they'll have a lot of listeners. I'm just trying to figure out a way to scoop some of them on top. I'm just, like, I, I'm pretty sure they were kissing up because they said that we did pretty good on our what? first podcast. Yeah, it was okay, I guess. You know, they said, well, you know, that's not too bad. Well, what do you think? So, yeah, well, you know. Better what my, my wife told me. But. <laughs> we didn't quit the day job. No, but, you no know. not yet. Derek's they're contemplating it. They're, they're both accountants, so you know how well that's going to go. Well, it's it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Literally. So uh, we're getting into it. I mean, what other tips do you have for our listeners? Like, I released my information. Like, I, I guarantee 
You want to get in that sports games? You buy some local. You got to do the work, though. You got. You got to do the work. How to say? You got to PSA. You got. You got to do, and maybe that's not your thing. If you have a coin uh, collection, apparently right now we have a big coin shortage. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy, but people are selling their coins to the bank. And the bank is paying a premium on coins. It's like 5% on top of what their coins are coming back. If you come in with $1,000, they're like giving you $50 for your coins. So right now, I, I don't know who's this person, but I know there's people out there who just, you know, uh, whenever you get change, you go put it in a, yeah, in, a in a water gallon, a water gallon bucket, or you had you know five gallon bucket. I think our friend Ben C. He had a Coca Cola, like a novelty Coca Cola can, yeah. that was like four feet taller or whatever. I, I, my dad used to have a, a jar where he put his his money for if we ever made it to Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, yeah, if we ever, if we ever made it, he had his, his silver his silver coins out there. So. Um, if you're one of these people, you and there's some people that, money. and we're talking pennies, dimes, nickels, and quarters, yeah. I mean, I don't know. When when before has a, a penny ever been able to get you a good return on your investment? <laughs> the other, I don't know, I, I will say this. So that that's one way, and I did listen. The TI-83, that's a great idea. I, I, I will, graphing calculators are always something that will make money. And right now, uh, colleges and, and schools aren't really in session, but here's a good thing, especially if you live, I know there's a lot of towns that have smaller community colleges, there's places that have bigger universities. You find where the college kids live, and at the end of the semesters, I, I think we've talked about this before, but, but we'll re, re, uh, bring it back. A lot of times the kids are moving, and they don't want pack lost stuff, or they don't have room for lost stuff, and they will throw away perfectly good things, because... Not every kid that goes to college, but a lot of kids that go to college are there on mom and dad's dime, and they don't value the money. That's just the way it is. It's a very true story. That's uh, so how I got a lot of couches when we were uh, when we were college age, yes. and and we'd be that time of the year where people would move, and they just leave nice couches out by the dumpster, and we'd just go and grab them. And um, but also things like the calculators. People found uh, textbooks college textbooks and stuff that you can sell either yourself or a lot of stores buy and sell them. Amazon's a big place for that. There's money. There's money in all of it. The graphing calculators, um, just random things that college kids have, older computers, older software. Uh, if you, I mean, not even necessarily have to dumpster dive, but just go around those areas. You'll see piles of, of boxes by dumpsters. If you go to the thrift stores around those areas, uh, if you put an ad out on your local Craigslist or Facebook place on there, you know, just you got to be a little creative. Again, this time of year, like Adam's saying, we don't have the same opportunities that we usually do to thrift. So this is more of when things get back to normal. Uh, but, but kids don't value the things that their parents bought unless it's like the iPhone. Yeah, they've all got that stuck in their pocket seven days a week. So the iPhone's cool. They understand there's value to that. The T83 graphing calculator they hated it, and they had to take that class, and they finally passed it, and they just want to get rid of it and never think of it again. So they throw it away, or we'll sell it to you for $3 at a yard sale. And then you go and sell it to the next kid for $80, and they're saving $20 off the cost because they have to take that stupid class that they don't want to take. And then you go and you rebuy it from that kid for $5, and you keep that cycle going. It's a cyclical thing. It's, it's a way to keep making money. Or if you know anyone that teaches school, as our friend Briefcase said, uh, Pelican was on the Husky section a few episodes ago. He has the cleanest uh, lost and found. <laughs> now, now, I mean, that's smart. That's a great way. I will. There, I did uh, someone's taxes this year. She got really good at selling lesson plans. She would create the lesson plan, and she had this for like a, a preschool type um, area, and she sold like twenty grand worth of, of preschool lesson plans. Because when you're really good at something, if you're if if you'd rather write lessons plans instead of have uh, you know kids in your preschool, which I would much rather do, because then you've already created one thing and you're selling it over and over and over, like my ten Jordan love cards. Well, let's break it down uh, again. I know we keep hitting the COVID about as hard as we've hit the sports card, but it's a different year. A lot of people are likely not to send their kids back to school, yep. or schools aren't reopening. You're going to have to homeschool. If you can sell something like that. Because uh, a lot of parents don't know how to teach, or they've been teachers. So if you very difficult thing. So if you can sell some sort of a plan that tells them, hey, this is what you do, step by step. Yep. They run the kids through the paces, and it sounds like you know what you're talking about. 
if you're a teacher right now, that's probably not a bad idea to make some extra money. And if by not a bad idea, you mean this is a great idea, this is excellent, this is the greatest idea ever, it's going to be huge, you should be doing it. Sell those lesson plans. Make money on what your experience is because parents like me will buy them because we're in this weird we don't know what our children are going to do because of the uncertainty of all of it. Do you know where they sell, sell where they sold the lesson plans at? Was it eBay or was I, it some I, that's form? That's a good or? question. I don't know where. I'll have to ask her that. Yeah, that'd be some good information. I don't know if you can put lesson plan. I guess you could on eBay. I just don't know if people are searching. If there's some place that this parents can actually go and sell, that'd probably be good to know. Great question. I know. That's why I asked it. Great question. Well, Adam, are we up against it yet? We are. I've been drinking two drinks simultaneously. You got that tells you anything. That you've been hitting it hard. Derek, there's a reason we call this the Death Piles and Taxes podcast. Why do we call that, Adam? Because for the rest of your life, and even the year that you die, you have to file your taxes. Well, I got a guy that does that for me. That's right, because here at Adam Up Accounting, that's what we do. We take care of taxes. We're very familiar with online retailers. Even if you're listening because you enjoy the sultry sounds of Derek Everett, we will take care of your taxes. Check us out online, adamupaccounting.com. The social media is we will help. Make sure that you file your taxes timely and enjoy the process. Adam, if we've learned anything the last couple months, it's that we've been paying too much for things. People are looking to save money. That's where our friends over at Visible Mobile come in. People are paying crazy amounts for cell phone service, and they just realized how much money is going out that door. Go over and check out VisibleMobile.com. Look at their plans. Look at what they have to offer. If you like it, remember it was us at Death Piles and Taxes that sent you. You're going to want to use our promo code BBWBQ. They got specials all day long. Just go see what they have and if it works for you. Well, great. It's because I have a cell phone and I need to pay less money. We're back for the second half of Death, Piles, and Taxes. Your podcast about making money online and learning how not to go to jail by skipping out on your tax payments. And if you're down like a basset hound, you found your show. Oh, because yeah. of cell hound, is that what you're getting at, or just basset hound in general? I just, I just, just felt right. Uh, hey, if it feels right, do it. And that won't get you in jail either. And if it does, you call Adam Beasley. He gave, he gave out his personal address. You just, you know, he'll bail you out. I'm not an attorney for that kind of thing. I'm, I'm a tax attorney. You're not an attorney. I don't know what that means. It means that you're not qualified to be an attorney. I am. A, I'm a tax attorney. You're a tax attorney. Yes, I, I represent people in front of tax court. Well, I'm not going to get Adam in any more trouble than he's got himself into right there. I've got a pretty big case coming up in front of the Utah State. I've got court. a pretty good big case coming on up. I, I do. I'm sure you do. I've got two of them. Well, I... I'm going against the man. And what happens when you fight the man? Hey, we're going to... These... Oh, man, you're... <laughs> I knew I could do it. They are... Attempting to make us pay taxes when Amazon should have been collecting them. The big boys. The big boys. They're trying to get us little guys. Squeezing the little man. man. Well, I like it when you fight the man, Adam. That's what we do. We fight the man. There. Speaking of fighting the man, I'm still I'm still in the USPS fight of my life. Derek got a raw deal on some uh, insured car or insured shoes. shoes. That he took care of, he did everything by the book, what he was supposed to. Now the post office is uh, giving him a difficult time of making sure this transaction is correct. I went in uh, to the afternoon folks, the night crew, and uh, I got a little more information from the night crew. They hadn't been told not to talk to me. Okay, well what happened? Uh, I, I went in and I presented my uh, items eBay's? for sale. I, I just dropped off my eBay stuff. I said, hey... Uh, I haven't heard anything back on my claim yet, because they're supposed to send me something that says whether or not it's been accepted or declined, and they're supposed to follow through and do their part. And the lady said, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. And I said, well, that's great. That's perfect. Let me, <laughs> I, haven't let me heard, up the speed I haven't heard about you yet. So I said, well, uh, you know, this 
I'm, I'm not going to tell the whole story again. So I told her, basically, well, I was supposed to, you know, have this guy get back to me. And he was too busy trying to put them in a thimble, and they wouldn't fit because they're too small. And uh, then I talked to this lady, and uh, she was giving me the runaround, too. And then the lady, she said, well, he's been helping out. And she tells me right where this guy's been, not where he hasn't. He's told me where he's at. Oh, boy. So was he on the premise? No, he was uh, over in Salem helping them out, which is like two towns over from us. So did you go there? No, I didn't. But I know where he's at, so that made me feel a little better. It's just right down the road. He's ducking the truck. It closes at, in about 40 minutes. We could go in and get him on the very you last You promised time. you're not going to let me go back to prison. What are you doing right now? I'm just saying, if I go with Keep you, me out of jail. I can represent you. <laughs> you're just trying to make some money. <laughs> I'm just trying to not let you go back to jail again. Oh, but I, I, I know where he's at if I need to find him. and I, I know the process where we're at. So Isn't your timeline coming to an expiration date? We're, get, we're getting close. I'm, I'm writing the, the rebuttal letter, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat them at their own game. However, uh, these people gave me a lot more info because they didn't know who I was or what was going on. And I said, thanks, guys. And they said, no, no problem. They don't tell us nothing. We're just the night crew. Who thinks that we should go to the post office, Facebook live it, and see what happens? <laughs> That's a federal building, Adam. Is that That's a, federal prison. Is there a rule against recording in a federal building? No, but there might be a rule against threats. Well, there's going to be no threats. Well, okay. We're not, I mean, we're just asking for simple information. There might be about telling a man where the thimbles are and what can go where and, and uh, why I'm upset with them. You might have to tone it down some, but then we can do. bring in some real information. We can get some... Uh, eyes on the situation that'd be kind of interesting to see how that was uh passed passed off but i will tell you one thing is we gotta step up our game we're getting requests well just because you get requests doesn't that doesn't mean you have to do it we're getting people i like that's what the girls in high school always told me just because you ask nicely doesn't mean i have to do it your wokeness was only limited to a certain <laughs> area i think you need to go back and reevaluate i have a lot, a lot of apologies to send out We've asked to step up our game. We've been asked to, we need to get the video feed of what we're doing. And I said, That's my department. 28 episodes ago, by 20 I mean 80, I don't have no part to do with that. That's on you. That is uh, my department. I'm here. Uh, I, they, they get edited and they get posted. That's what I do. The hard part is I'm going to have to figure out how to edit it. So maybe what we'll, we'll just go live like they do on the Dan Patrick show. Here's my they thing. They show the entire thing like on the commercial breaks. I just think that would be boring. I don't know who wants to sit and watch us do the show. People We're just do. sitting here doing nothing. But it's the same banter. They get to see it now. Then I'll have to start wearing my, my shirt. You are wearing a shirt. Well, because you had company over. This is a working business here, I and mean, it's not a Nevada-type business that uh, it, Heidi Fleiss runs. It's a legitimate accounting firm. There's an insurance agent. There's an engineer firm. We do real things here. And I come over comfortable in my podcast wear. I, I don't know. There's, there's a reason that you're on that list. I know. It's because I'm number one. You are number one. I'm on the list. What other notes <laughs> did you have? What well, okay, uh, here, here's what I need to do, folks. Last week I talked about, we had a question come in about the different platforms and kind of what the difference was. And there's a few platforms I left out. And I got kind of worked up because I was trying to make a funny joke and I was kind of going with it. And uh, I kept saying Etsy instead of Poshmark. Disclaimer on this, this is the point of view from Derek. I do not take any personal responsibility, nor does our station or anybody's sponsors take any kind of influence that what Derek is about. Adam Up County. Adam Up Accounting stands behind me when I yell at the post office, but not when I explain platforms. Because I know the direction you're going and, and go for it. So okay. Do with the listeners. Okay, so I was trying to say, now Etsy's a homemade, so when I was trying to say that was the uppity girl uh, last week, it's not really fair because something that's homemade is not usually presented that way, although it is good quality Etsy, is good quality homemade goods. Uh, I have a, a sister-in-law's friend who I want to bring on the show that sells a lot at Etsy. She makes uh, homemade different items and things. Um, been wanting to have her on for a while, but you work that out. That's my bad. Um, I know a few people that should be selling on Etsy. They, they make homemade goods, they make uh, crafts, they do a lot of woodwork, that kind of stuff. Uh, now, Poshmark is more of your upper-end clothing-type items. That's what I was trying to say, the more um, prom queen-type people. 
would shop on Etsy. And, and oh, see, I did it again, Poshmark. And, and how did you refer to the, the Macari platform? What was that again? Oh, Macari, I'll get there. No, no, don't rush me. No, that's what happened last time. The views on this standpoint are not he asked. those. That Adam asked so that he wanted to know these views. Now, when you're talking about, so when you're selling on Poshmark, people expect it to be uh, wrapped well. They want an experience, which isn't a bad thing. But they, when you take the pictures, they usually have cute backdrops. They usually have uh, almost like a photo experience. It's more of like a catalog type experience. And when you send your stuff, people want like a handcrafted letter that says this uh, sweater has found its way by way of you from, you know, a little experience of, you know, probably the name of the sweater and, and, and why it was, you know, sent to you. And they, they want an experience. When they open up the thing, they just don't want the item. They want it wrapped up in tissue paper in a nice box with bows, with letters. And they're going to pay more of a premium for that, which is great if you're that kind of a seller. So in Derek's world, this would be when you um, are going on a date. I'm saying this, not Derek. This is this. I'm trying to relay it in the correct way. This Words is, in his mouth. This would be the format of you formally get out of the car, walk up, knock on the door, talk to the father. Hey, I need to tell you a story about this girl I took out one time. Do, do I can't say it on the air right now, but it's, it's, a, it's a beauty. Don't leave me hanging. That is what you're saying is this kind of, you do the right, uh, you do a it's, lot of Okay, yeah, it's more of a formal. Oh, yeah, I'll give you that. So it's more of you're going to a prom or you're going to a homecoming dance where, yeah, you're in your, your nice attire, you got grim tux, yes. you're going to, you're going to take pictures. I can agree with you on this part. So it's more of a formal and it's going to cost you a little more, but there is a great uh, margin for gain in that area. Okay. Macari. We're not there yet. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Got ahead of myself. Etsy is more of, you know, you met in, in class. You're probably in shop class. And it's homemade. You're just, you know, down home people. You're probably, like like our, our friend Pelican always talks about this penny girl. Probably similar to this experience of, you know, you're just kind of, how would you explain that? It's a... Uh, I ain't baiting on that. Well, no, you, you came up with the formal. So this is more of like a Sadie Hawkins dance. It, it's kind of like that, or like you, you're, you're friends. You're kind of friends, and yeah, you're just going out to have a good time. Um, there's money to be made there yes. in the in the Etsy world. Possibilities of great things. Maybe make a good uh, relationship of friendship where you go into business together, but you're handcrafted, so you're making your own um, goods. Your own, your own type. It's almost the county fair, where you're putting your, your homemade items, and that's where you sell. So you're going down to the county fair. And so that's more of the gal you take to the county fair. Please don't tell me it's like your 4-H when you're showing animals. Oh, man. I should take some pictures. I used to show sheep. I know that you did. <laughs> so. Um, so that would be like your Etsy. That's more of your Etsy. Okay. Now, eBay is kind of a mixed mosh of whatever you're selling. Uh, eBay is kind of like when you're in college and you're dating a lot of different type of people to try to see who you click with and long term where you want to end up. You know, you might experiment a little bit. It doesn't work for you this way. You try it that way. Or you go over there and you're trying to go out on the prom date and you decide that's not for you and you find what works for you. eBay is just kind of a, an assortment of everything thrown together, not really a lot of specialties, a lot of different niches. You find what works for you and you go with it. I just want to reiterate that Derek is extremely woke and he said he experimented in college in relationships. I'm just, I'm just saying that. Spent a lot. I woke up on your couch more than one night, Adam. Is that, that true or not? That unfortunately is a true story. <laughs> okay. Now, now if we, uh, now Depop, this is one that just came up. What? This just came. This just came up. So so Depop is uh, it's like it's like it's like kids, man. It's like your your uh, your high school lovers or something like that, or like middle school romance. It's just really new and fresh. And me and Adam can't sell on there because we're too old, basically. It's a it's a it's a newer platform where kids are just going to thrift stores. It's kind of like eBay from people that don't know what eBay is for the most part. So Depop is kind of like your, uh, what was that social media that you were all about with the... I didn't even spell it right, so... Yeah, I mean, if you if you go do a fetch on the cell hand, you can see a few of these places, but... Huh. Um, what's that? TikTok. It's yeah. kind of like the TikTok just, of selling. We just got to sell on a wheelchair because of TikTok today. So it's like the TikTok of, of selling platforms. I didn't throw them out last week. Wow. Okay. Then you have Macari. Now Macari, 
Keep in mind, the views of this from Derek do are not the viewpoints of this, this show, this platform. Anyone that is associated with this, we may or may not agree with what he's about to say. Now, Macari is awesome, and everyone loves Macari, because you go on Macari, and you find somebody that's just awesome, and then they have a bunch of cool friends, too, and you can just kind of go around, and they're really chill. Like, you're going out to the parking lot, maybe you're meeting at the stands of the football game, uh, you're dragging Main Street. You're kind of getting a little bit of trouble, but not too much. You're going down to the pond. Maybe you're doing a little skinny dipping, but nothing bad. I mean, you're not going to get yourself in too much trouble. You know, maybe you're out in the cornfield having a few uh, few soda pops, but it's nothing horrible. But they're just, you know, you're just there for probably yeah, a good time, maybe a, a, a day or two, and then you're going to move on to the next. And they're cool with it. It's, he's saying it's not a long-term um, relationship. It's not long-term, but the prices, so here's what I found with Macari, is the prices are just great. People are just throwing things up on Macari, seeing what sticks. They're just trying to clear house, basically. So, like Adam's talking about with these cards and things, I've been able to go and get John Stockton rookie cards for $8 a card, which I could sell on eBay for $30 a card raw ungraded. But just because it's Macari, they're just out having fun. They're out clearing the closet. They're out clearing the garage. They don't care. They just want to make the eight bucks, and they're cool with it. Well, the same thing if you're selling on Macari. You can flip things. You can sell things. It's just a good time. You left out one thing that you said last week. The, the gal that likes to smoke in the parking lot? That's the one. Well, who doesn't? I mean, everyone knew who that was. You tell me in front of the bat there weren't people out smoking in the parking lot during uh, high school There days. were definitely people out smoking in the parking lot. We and had, were they cool people? We had a name for it, and I cannot share it on the air. Would you ever walk by and, and get guff from them, or were they just kind of laid back, just happy to see you, people? Happy to see you. Macari's happy to see you. Yeah, and there were guys out smoking in the parking lot, too. My analogy last week was just about the gals that you were dating, and that's kind of where this was. kind of wasn't. They were just happy to see you, man. They were just out having a good time. You probably played a little hacky sack, and then you were five minutes late to class. You are not going to hear this kind of breakdown on any other podcast. Explain not to not you. about selling online. Selling online. This is original. This is you can't make this stuff up because Derek knows more about this selling game than honestly mo most people do. So what what I'll do is I'll go on to these other platforms and I'll say, "Hey, that's a great item." And I think of my experience over on eBay with all the multi-different items. I think that will fit over there, but for a premium price. And I'll, I'll buy it. But even on eBay, you can buy and flip off eBay. Flip off eBay, get it? Buy low, sell high. I mean, uh, we're talking, have you done many yard sales this year? I haven't done, I, I went to one, and like I said, I actually just talked to my wife. We still need to have That's what I was sale. bringing up. We need to have a yard sale. So that we can get some money. Get some, some equity, some sellings. Some money for some of these things that we've been holding on to. I need to get rid of my debt file so that I can work on this card section over here. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people right now haven't had a lot of yard sales going on. I know it's all where you're at in the country. I know we have listeners all over. Uh, but it's just weird. So you need to find extra places to source. And maybe you have an uncle that is good at wood carving but doesn't know how to sell it. Go help them set up an Etsy shop. Maybe say, I'll, I'll do this for 10% of your profit. Or you have that aunt that's still smoking in the parking lot, even though she's well out of high school, and you say, hey, you got some stuff on here. We can sell them a car. I'm, I'm not usually for the commission sales or for the, the doing the, uh, you know, I, I just hate when people bring you over stuff and you tell them what's worth and, and kind of get involved that way. But maybe that's where we're at in the world. Maybe you have that old aunt that's about ready to kick the bucket and she's got some good stuff and you know her son's going to come and, and take it all, and you're not going to be able to get it because he's going to inherit it. You go over to your, your aunt and you say, here's $500. Can I have all this stuff? It's that time to do the creative sourcing. That's, those are great points. Um, I will be, I, there's two things I want to get into. It's kind of oh, I thought, was, I thought you were ending the show. No, no. Two things for certain. I thought you were going right down that road. Two things. We're not there yet. Got more, more I thought so, but you were just the two things got me going. Um, the name of my game is it's taxes. I do it. The name of the show is Death Piles and Taxes. It's, it's literally a pun on your pile of stuff when you pass away. That's just what happens. Um, we, we lost a good friend this week. Um, client that I had, young, I mean, he was 43 years old. 
he passed away at a stroke and uh, unfortunately had to have that real conversation. His wife called, um, had to go over some details with him. So, um, it, you know, it's just, it is, it's a part of life. It, it just, it's going to happen. Fortunately, it wasn't, uh, you know, got two young girls and, you know, my heart went out to them and, and there's just, that's a part of life. So it's just going to happen and that's what when we talk about. It, Never a good thing. We never meet it in a, in a um, you know, nonchalant, like he says, it's real. It, it happens with everybody. So that's part of the thing. I am going to bring up another topic with it is <clears throat> this is a, a financial, it's a it doing thing. Do yourself a favor and get some sort of life insurance. Uh, if you don't believe in it, you don't do anything, you can find a, a very inexpensive term life policy for a minimum 10 years, you know, whatever the dollar amount is, the more it is, the better. Do yourself a favor. So if something were to happen to you at a young age, something will be passed along to your family so that things can be taken care of. And I mean that in absolutely the most sincere. I see so many things. I see so many people. That little thing, obviously losing a loved one, is it's irreplaceable. And unfortunately, money it makes the world go round. And just because somebody passes away doesn't mean that you can stop paying your mortgage. Doesn't mean that you don't have to pay for groceries. And if that person loses their ability to make money, um, it's going to be a lot of issues and problems. So again, that's my point. Take a little time, get some quotes, find some very inexpensive term life insurance that you can find ex inexpensive policies for you know, 20, 30, 50, 70 dollars a month, it just kind of depends on that. Do yourself a favor and look into it. And best case, maybe worst case, you get to say 20 years from now, I wasted my money, I didn't die, I didn't need to collect that life insurance. Yes, and, and I don't know, I just, I saw his obituary over there and I wanted to get into that. So, that's on the um, downer thing, but unfortunately that is the reality of things. Well, I when are we going to do our, uh, our uh, yard sale? I, I got. I just literally talked to my wife about it yesterday. I'm going to see what we can do. I'm, I'm probably planning for next Friday or Saturday. That's kind of my thought. Well, I'm, I'm in if it's a Saturday. I got uh, plenty of purses and some other stuff that hasn't sold that uh, would look great on your lawn. It would look excellent. But pest-free lawn, as I've learned now. It is the pest-free lawn. Well, what uh? Well, yeah, what did you do? What you doing here? What's, just, what we looking at? Just hold on one thing real quick. Our, our, our pod being changed our, uh, our uh, what do you call it, how we look at things. But I just wanted to pull this up. They've changed his perspective on life, folks. They, they certainly have. Right, let's keep, keep going. Let me, let me well, well, that brings this up. We need a listener from uh, South Dakota, and we need a listener from Alaska. We'll have all 50 states. Uh, I don't remember how many countries we were in, but... If you know anyone from either of those places and you want you a death piles and taxes sticker, if you get me a listener from Alaska, or if you go to Alaska and listen, or South Dakota, or you go to South Dakota and listen, and you let me know it was you at D. Roy Everett on the Twitter, Instagram, and or Facebook, I will send you a death piles and taxes sticker. And if you want the uh, golden ticket sticker, because I still have some left over, I'll send you one of those. How about that for initiative? What a, what a great idea. Adam doesn't even have some of that. I, I don't have some of these things. These are all new to me. I do want to share with you, uh, again, we've been doing this for about 18 months, the unbelievable amount of downloads that we have in other countries. There you are. I'm fathomed by this. This, this just blows me away. We have people in France who love d -Roy. I don't blame them. They, they, I mean, in, in France, they are in, in, inebriated with his personality. He oozes personality. They've invited me to come over and have some baguettes. I, I will say this. As soon as the world opens back up, I'll take you up on that. We have downloads in France, Germany, Canada, Ireland, United Kingdom, Australia, Israel, Costa Rica, India, Netherlands, Turkey, Romania, Mexico, Czech Republic, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Japan, Micro-Indonesia, Malaysia, New Zealand, Poland, Taiwan, Uganda, Vietnam. And do you know what all those places have in common? Uh, I don't know. 
you can sell online and you can make money, and that's why they're listening to death piles and taxes. And I'm sure every one of those places have to pay taxes. And I will bring I don't know about micro Indonesia if they have to pay taxes or not. The system they got over there is a little different. You you would be uh, an expert in the uh, tax system of micro Indonesia. I mean, you know how you're a lawyer for people here in America. Yes. I may have a few clients that I represent in uh, tax services over in micro Indonesia. They probably listen to the podcast to make sure that they're not getting the uh, you know the wall pulled over their eyes or anything like that. I did file my first um, Singapore. Um, backed tax return. So that was an interesting process. Oh, well, there you go. International man of mystery. The international um, abilities, because no matter where you go, there's some form of taxes that you have to pay. You are responsible. You make money. And I'm going to hit something that I've been holding in my crow. Your crow? Yes. Where's your crow at? I can't show you right now. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you had uh, your craw or something. No. Your crow. Okay. There's people online that are that are chirping. They're talking about Venmo. They're asking about Venmo's um, policy about um, taking money and issuing 1099s. You can go back, look in the archives. I've been saying this for 18 months now. Anything you're doing on Venmo, you are going to be responsible for to the IRS in the very near future. And if you want to test it out, you can send me money on Venmo and see what the IRS does. Any any. Um, Anything's accepted. That will be any currency. You can you can call that training fees because that will be a legitimate um, tax write off. You can really mess me up with my taxes this year by sending me money at Venmo and, and uh, I'll, I'll take it from you. And then boy, will I have to pay taxes on that? And I'll have to come up with how I got this money. And I don't mean that purposely. I mean if you're accepting money on garage sales, like so they're not there yet, but you have to start to understand. Derek just talked about we're having a coin shortage, which means cash is going to gradually fall off the planet. It's not going to happen. Everything is going to be electronically tracked. Do you really think that Uncle Sam is going to be, hey, hey, all these guys are doing this stuff in Venmo, and it's not supposed to be a business account. Do you really think that they're going to believe you pretty soon? That's why you send me Bitcoin. At D. Roy Everett Bitcoin. Derek has got an answer for everything. That's why he's in this position. In no, I mean, obviously the government's going to find ways to tax whatever they can. Uh, they're looking for ways. You're never going to scoot around the system enough to avoid Uncle Sam. And, and yes, some of those um, platforms are extremely um, valuable. They're very easy. Um, a lot of banks are offering those kind of things. There are several different ones. But if you're doing this as a business, which I hope that you are, you need to keep track of income and expenses. It's just that easy. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't keep track of it because it will eventually, um, it will benefit you to keep track of everything. I mean, a lot of this is going cashless, uh, again, to beat on the uh, COVID harp. Uh, a lot of people don't like touching money right now. They don't like, you know, it's a lot easier to go digital. You don't have to worry about who's, who's uh, been touching this, has it been, you know, who knows? If you think about it, money is really gross with all the places and, and hands and, and places that it could have been, where it goes. Even if you go down to just an arcade and just and just a uh, quarter that goes in, a, in the uh, slot of a, of a jukebox or a, a video game, and there's lots of places where those quarters could have been. Is that what you thought 25 years ago? No, well, I, I still will deal with cash, but... A lot of people are kind of getting to that point where they're like, oh, this is kind of gross, nasty, we got pandemics, we got flus. A lot of people just prefer to go with the Venmo, the instant thing, the credit card, the now credit cards, you just have to, you don't even have to swipe a credit card, you just pass it by and, and the, the fast cash, the easy pay. I'm just saying that's the way the world's going, so if you're selling online, you need to be able to adapt and to... Uh, accept those kind of payments. And and if you have an issue with your coins, like I said, take them to, if, if you want to get rid of your cash, you're welcome to come here to the office. I've got a plethora of cards that you can purchase for me. That's my hope coming here in the uh, the fall time. Um, I, I want people to pay me in cash. They don't even have to pay. Uh, you, if you don't want to purchase anything, I'll just take your cash. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take it off your hands. Yes. I'll sanitize it. If you want me to sanitize your cash and give it back to you, I do have a premium service, but I will do that for you. You give me a dollar, I'll give you a nickel. <laughs> well, I mean, it'll cost you a quarter. I'll, I'll take your dollar, I'll give you back 75 cents, but I'll clean that dollar. Now, if you want a dollar bill, it'll be a dollar twenty-five to get clean to get it back to you. And 
that's just how it begins. That's the teaser price. The more you do, the less you save. Now, Adam, I, I try to find things online, and I like to buy things locally. Um, it's just easy to go on Facebook Marketplace, kind of those places. Yeah. I know we talk about sourcing being a little hard, and, and I'm trying to give different ideas. Um, I always like to say buy what you have in your local area. Uh, look at what businesses and things are around you. There's probably people that work in these businesses, and they either get discounts or they get free product. A lot of them have closets full of things. Uh, maybe they're walking home with things. Either way, they might not be able to resell it, but they don't necessarily want the product. That being said, I, I've been watching people that are selling. Um, uh, how do I word this without getting people in trouble and getting things taken away? Right. Essential, essential oils. Okay. People selling these essential oils, and I know they get them for free because they work with the company. Yes. So I've contacted a few of these people, and I say, hey, I'm, I'm interested. Straight up, I resell. I'd be interested in paying you half of what the wholesale quote-unquote price is or of this price that it's selling for on eBay. So say you got a magic orange essential oil that sells for $50. I will buy it for $25. Now, if you can do this every month, I'll buy it from you every month for $25. I understand I will be selling it for $50. However, I know you can't sell it because you, the company, how all that works, and blah, blah, blah. A lot of these people come back to me and say, well, it's worth $50. I said, okay, then keep it. Yeah. You have zero. So I, it's kind of frustrating. It's kind of trying to get into, I, I, I'm trying to find me a new road just to be able to get some extra, because it sells fast, it sells easy. When I have been able to get in there, and I like the idea of being able to just replenish. People keep bringing it month after month, and it's just a, a good stream, right? It's a great idea. It's a great stream. You don't have to go out. Now, in other areas, people have different type businesses. Um, See what's around, folks. You might be able to find your wholesale accounts or things uh, from, from places that you didn't know. Maybe there's a maybe there's a Wranglers factory right next to you, and maybe they have a, uh, a regular Wranglers store there. And maybe you can find, not Huskies, but the Slim Jeans, and you can get them for 15 20%, 50% less than what they sell for. You can buy those every month, and you can sell them for near regular prices as new. You, you got to get creative in this unique time. But don't let them tell you they're worth 20 bucks and uh, and and try to make you pay full price. Yes, like as go through it, there's several companies that are going out of business. I mean, we know the big boys, J.C. Penney's, like cause we know some of these places, your local mall. I mean, you know, if, if that's the game you want to get into, you know, there's opportunities. And I wanted to end on one point because you did talk about it several, several episodes ago. Your, your aunt or somebody has World Football League hats? Oh, I do. You've got some. Oh, yeah. You need some Barcelona Dragon look up? I do need some. We, It'll we, cost you. We've gotten heavy into the uh, the World League. So I don't know if I have any left. but So uh, I'll, I'll get a little derailed here. It's, it's not a big derail. My, uh, my grandmother. So in the small town I grew up in, there used to be a sewing factory. It was a hat sewing factory. And a lot of the women in the town um, work at this place. Both of my grandmothers, I believe Michael uh, Painter's grand, uh, not grandmother, but mother worked there. Um, and so a lot of the ladies would get just hats. They'd give them hats. I got a, uh, a Broncos uh, AFC Championship hat that they wore on the field after, back in the 80s. I got a Cubs one. You can find all this online at D-Roy Everett's uh, Facebook. Oh, if you just look at the show notes, you, you can find my store link. It's right there. But, yeah, one of the things they did was they had the uh, World Football League and I have some Barcelona Dragons hats. Um, I think that's the only team I have, actually. I don't even know if I have any left, but I did sell them on eBay, and I did sell them for a premium price. But I know if you were to go around uh, the area in which we grew up, not you because you're from Trump, Nevada, but my wife, my wife, your wife and me, um, if you were to ask around, I know there are boxes in people's basements that you could find. So ask around, find your people, like he says, you can sell things online, that the resources are, are unbelievable, so that Walmart's getting in on the game, they, they want resellers, the, the selling things online is not going away, and nor are the other two things in life that are certain there. Well, that's true, Adam, because no matter what, there are always going to be death piles. And taxes.